It's that time of the year, the last Grand Slam is done, which means that racket releases are also over, so we get to reflect on everything that's come out since January. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Who doesn't like a bit of top five magic? It's been a crazy year for racket releases, so we're always gonna have to do a little roundup at some point, and we all know that a top five means views, and we like views. If you've been following this channel since the beginning of the year, you probably know that I've extensively playtested most of this year's major releases, so I've been cooking up the ideas for this one for a while in my head, so yeah, I'm pretty excited for this one. I also just wanted to say we released our first video back in February, and the channel has grown so much since then, so just a massive, massive thank you for all your support. I really can't believe how far we've come, and I cannot wait for the future. So it is always a little bit tough to define what the best is, so I'm going to get into some criteria here in a second. But before any of that, I have to remind you that any of the rackets we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. And please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments section what you want me to cover next. Okay, on to the classic Luca criteria. What the heck do I mean by the best rackets? Because realistically, the best is pretty subjective. The racket has to be outstanding in at least one of our favorite playability characteristics. That's to say spin, power, control, feel, or even variety. If it's good at more than one, then even better. Criteria number two is probably my personal favorite, but this racket has to be unique and if it's not the first racket in the line, it has to be a noticeable improvement on the racket it replaces. Buying a racket isn't cheap, and brands are coming out with new versions all the time nowadays, so if you want somebody to buy your latest and greatest, and part with their hard-earned money to do so, it better actually be the latest and greatest. Okay, criteria three is where we get a little subjective, and I leave room for a personal veto. I have to like the racket enough to put it on this list, so that's criteria three. It has to be Luca approved. Kind of makes sense. The last criteria, and I promise we're almost done, but the rackets must have come out in 2023. Obviously, there are a lot of current rackets that didn't come out this year, but to make it a true 2023 list, you kind of have to do that. But anyways, that's enough chatting. Let's start handing out some awards. Coming in at number five, we have the Yonex V-Core 95. Now, this is a good time to explain that I'm talking about individual rackets, not full-on racket lines, and I'll explain in a second why I picked the 95 over the 98 or the 100. First of all, though, let's talk about the new V-Core's awesome new design. In my opinion, it's become way too common for brands to just copy-paste with new technology from one version to the next, but these V-Cores are drastically different to the ones they replace. All three of the new V-Cores, the 100, the 98, and the 95, have a totally new head shape with a much more squared off top portion of the hoop here. That's done two major things, mainly with regards to the sweet spot. One, moved the sweet spot higher up the frame, and two, opened up the string bed in the sweet spot. Moving the sweet spot up the frame basically has made the racket more powerful. It moves the optimal point of contact farther away from you, which means you have more leverage over the ball for more power. So more power might mean less control, but because the string bed is also more open in the sweet spot, you have more access to spin than you had before. So for players who naturally hit with a lot of spin, they can control that powerful launch with spin, but it's not without its flaws. Sweet spot far up the frame really opens string bed in the sweet spot. Both those things kind of make the racket more wild. That's why to me, the 95 is kind of the golden egg in this lineup. Because it has the smallest head size and tightest string pattern, it also has the most precise and solid feel of the three. So you get all those improvements I mentioned above, while losing the least amount of control to get there. I also just have to say it, and I'm probably going to get memed for this, but the silicone oil-infused grommets really do work wonders for string snapback, which also helps with spin. Basically, the V-Core 95 ticks all the boxes. It's a huge change and improvement on a racket line that had been suffering for the last couple of generations. It's a fantastic stick. Honestly, this amount of power and spin from a 95 really is quite something. While we're on the topic of a line that needed a bit of love, the V-Core Pro was so dead in the water that it didn't just need a good update, it needed a full-on rebrand. Enter number four, the Yonex Percept 97. Now, to be honest, the Percept isn't really a new line, it's just a new name for the V-Core Pro, because other than the technology, everything about the Percept 97 is pretty much identical to the last V-Core Pro 97. The good news is those technological changes were very necessary and very good. To put it bluntly, I was not a fan of the last V-Core Pro 97. I found it mushy, muted, and the sweet spot not well-defined, and sometimes if a racket has other good characteristics, I'll give it a pass in that sense, but when it's supposed to be the brand's flagship control racket. No, no, no. The good news is pretty much all those things have been improved on the Percept, which is why I think Yonex totally knocked it out of the park with this release. The biggest update has to be in the feel department, which is always a little bit tough to explain, but all that mushiness I felt with the previous one is gone, and that's thanks to this new dampening tech servo filter. It makes for a much more crisp and more well-defined feel in the sweet spot, which ends up 
making for better control because you're more connected to the ball. One thing to note with the Percept is that it's not as soft anymore. It doesn't have that same buttery control of something like the Prestige, but more of a point and shoot style of control, kind of like you had on stiffer Pro Staffs, or at least somewhere in between, but closer to the Pro Staff. The other big improvement Yonex made is in spin. Now, vibration dampening mesh is part of the reason why the last one felt so mushy, and I always felt that that mushy feel meant for a stickier string bed, which contributed to a lackluster spin potential. Replacing VDM with servo filter definitely helped with spin, but I actually think the main reason this racket spin profile is so much better is yeah, again, thanks to the silicone oil-infused grommets. Uh-huh, yeah, I know, I'm gonna become a meme. But honestly, they really do work. They're probably the best spin tech out there right now. Actually, let's wait for number three before we start handing out spin tech awards, but yeah, they're really good. So yeah, the Percept 97 is a massive, massive improvement on what was a really dying line. So Yonex, you've really killed it this year. And honestly, the more I play with the Percept 97, the more it's quickly becoming one of my favorite rackets right now. All right, the last two have been fantastic updates on already established lines, and no, a name change does not count, I'm sorry. But coming in at number three, we have a brand new racket, the Wilson Shift 99. I don't know about you, but I feel like the Shift had a lot of hype during the prototype, but then it kind of faded away over time. Don't worry, I'm here to reignite that hype because this is a fantastic stick. If you want the cliff notes on this racket, it's a spin racket at heart, but with an element of feel, power, and precision that gives it a variety you just won't get with proper spin frames like the Aero 100 or Extreme MP. How did they achieve that? Well, instead of using classic spin tech like really open spin grommets or a really wild open string bed, they've come up with a totally unique way of laying up the graphite inside the frame. The Shift's classic horizontal flex is really stiff which helps its power but then the vertical flex which is something we've never really talked about is really soft the vertical flex by the way is how the shift flexes and pockets the ball on this plane when you hit a proper spinny ground stroke you get this very unique sensation of the ball sinking deep into the string bed and then shooting out with a ton of spin way more than you would expect what's so good about this technology is that it doesn't take away from solidity stability and precision the way some other spin technologies do so there really is no downside to it the feel definitely isn't classic but it's objectively quite good even when you're not hitting with spin, you still have a pretty crisp and well-defined sweet spot, which gives you a pretty nice element of point and shoot control. The one thing I will say about the shift is that it can do with a bit of customization. Adding a leather grip and bringing the swing weight up to around 320 will just help stabilize it and make it even better for control without really sacrificing any of that spin. It's also worth pointing out that the Shift 99 Pro is also very good, but I do think the 99 represents the true identity of this line a bit better, which is why it's the one coming in at number three. There is another thing with the Shift. I get a lot of questions questions asking to compare this to the Clash, and I understand why that question is out there. Unique Wilson Racket trying to break up the establishment, but the Shift really isn't anything like the Clash. This is much more of an advanced player's racket. It's really not all that forgiving, and it's more so made for those players who are whipping their ground strokes quickly through contact, because that's where you're gonna benefit most from this technology. Okay, so I do wanna build up a bit of tension here, but it might be futile considering a certain 18 by 20, 100 square inch frame came out this year. But choosing between number one and number two is really hard, sort of. Coming in at number two, we have the Babolat Pure Aero 98. I did already explain why I like the Aero 98 so much in our previous video, so go watch that one if you haven't already. I go way more into detail there than I will here, but this is another racket that is absolutely fantastic. Luca, you don't really need to specify that these rackets are fantastic. It's a top five rackets of the year list. It quite literally goes without saying. Anyways, the Aero 98 kind of ticks all the above criteria. Let's talk about the outstanding characteristic first. Obviously this is an arrow, so spin potential is incredible. It's close to, if not on the same level as the 100, but where it separates itself from that racket is that, kind of like the shift, it has much, much better variety. Thanks to that smaller head size, it feels quite precise. And when you combine the aerodynamic beam with a smaller head size, you get this incredible racket head speed and maneuverability that I've really never felt anywhere else. I don't want to say that Alcaraz's talent is thanks to the Aero 98, but I'm not going to lie. What he does with this frame kind of just makes sense considering what I feel when I'm holding it. Give me the Aero 98 and then all I need is just a little bit of talent sprinkled in and maybe I'll win Wimbledon. It also nails the improvement on previous racket criteria. Most people know this, but this is basically the next version of the VS, and the big changes come in feel and solidity. They're using NF2 Tech flak inserts in the layup, which has improved feel on all the rackets it's used in, but my favorite change is the elimination of those big massive spin grommets at 6 and 12 o'clock. Those were good for increasing string movement, but they made the VS feel a little bit wild and unpredictable, and the slight decrease in spin for me is totally justified considering how much more controlled and solid this feels. Now I have to say, having the Shift 99 and Aero 98 as the two kind 
kind of best spin rackets this year is pretty awesome. Spin rackets are clearly going in the right direction in terms of all around playability. And these two rackets represent that to a T. All right, I really did try to build up the drama, but the reality is if you've been following this channel for the better part of a year, you already know how I feel about this racket. Coming in at number one, we have the Head Gravity Pro. Now there's definitely a big, big emphasis on criteria number three here because yeah, I like pretty much everything about this racket. There's just an X factor in terms of feel and fun with this thing that just makes it a joy for me every time I play with it. But with all that said, it is objectively fantastic if not the best control racket right now. I know it's a 100, but the amount of feel, precision, and soft, buttery control you have with this thing is totally unique considering the slightly more forgiving element of its bigger head size. Compared to other classic player's frames, you just don't need the same amount of constant perfection because the sweet spot is bigger. But then on the flip side, I just can't say it's any sloppier or less predictable. So yeah, you get the point, great racket. But the question is, has it actually improved coming from the 360 plus because that racket was already a banger. I will admit it's not a massive improvement, but the subtle changes head made are exactly what the racket needed. Adding Oxetic to the throat did what it's done to pretty much every other racket in head's line. It subtly but noticeably improved the feel and who doesn't like good feel, especially on a control racket. The other thing head did was lower the target swing weight by around five points to try to make it more maneuverable and more user-friendly for a wider variety of players and they really did accomplish that. Part of the reason why I went for the Gravity Tour with the previous version is because I just couldn't swing the Mighty Pro. This one is definitely more user-friendly, so that's a huge win for us. Still an advanced player's racket, but one that a lot of players can and should try. I also definitely went pretty hard on the personal veto for this one because honestly, the other rackets on this list are bigger improvements on their previous versions. But hey, if you ask me point blank what the best racket of the year is, there's no way I'm not saying the Gravity Pro. So there you have it. It has been a crazy long video, so we are going to wrap it up but I did just want to say it's been a pretty awesome year for racket releases and there definitely were a few others that could have made the list from what I've heard it's going to be another very cool year next year I can't really say what's coming up but yeah we're in for another wild ride for now though that is going to be the end of the video thank you so much for watching if you do want to demo any of the rackets we mentioned here today you can come visit us in store or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca